In today's video, I take my Echo Dot to the next level. So I'm going to give it a much larger sound stage and those nice deep frequencies we all crave. Sure, I could have just brought something like an Echo Studio, but with a $350 price tag here in Australia, I thought why not put my DIY skills to the test and see what I can come up with. So welcome back to the channel guys, today you're watching Griffin's Builds and join me as I transform my Echo Dot into a one of a kind audio powerhouse. So stick around and let's get started. So for most of my projects I always start with 3D modeling the whole thing up in a CAD software. For this one I used Onshape. It's a really good software, very easy to use and it's all browser based so you don't need to do installation or anything. So it's great. So the majority of my parts I 3D printed out on my Ender 3 V3 SE. For the main cylinder, I printed it using lightning infill, which means it will mostly hollow and I only use infill where it requires support. As you might be able to see here, I've integrated a port into the cylinder wall. To calculate the size of the port required, I use a software called WinISD. So as you can see here, I'm using a Dayton Audio TCP115. So that's a four inch driver. The cylinder volume is 2.9 liters and I want to tune it to 55 Hertz. So with the calculated port size, I should get an F3 down to 52 hertz, approximately. It was all printed using Black Pet G. As you can see, there's a bit of stringy on the inside there, but luckily it's only on the inside and you can't see it on the outside. So after I finished printing all of them, it was time to go around and clean up all the separate pieces. I usually use a Stanley knife just to remove any little dags or any unwanted support, etc. Due to the main cylinder being hollow, it's obviously not ideal as far as resonance goes. So to solve the resonance problem, I drilled holes in the top here. So I already like kind of marked those locations out in my 3D model. I could then come along with some gap filler. So it was very cheap stuff. It's like $3 for every t tube of this stuff. And I think I used about three tubes. So this would do a really good job at dampening the mid-level frequencies and vibrations. I used it on my last build and it worked quite well. Ideally, it would be better probably just to print it at a high 40% plus infill density. Although I want to avoid having a print that takes like three or four days. I try to limit it to around about 16 hours maximum for a print. To cover the outside of the cylinder, I decided to use a black walnut timber veneer. It's very thin and very easy to work with. It's basically like cutting a sheet of paper. So you can just use a Stanley knife and like a ruler and just cut straight through it. So I did some research and it seems that PVA wood glue can bond quite well to 3D printed material. I think mainly due to the surface not being perfectly smooth. It's like little fine textured surface from all the different layers. So I had to spread the glue over the whole thing and while well, try and be careful not to get glue on the front face of the veneer. It was a little bit tricky to get it all lined up perfectly around the cylinder. So I had to have the join pretty much meet up perfectly. Or well, try not to get glue everywhere as well. <laughs> I didn't want to have to sand the glue off the veneer just in case I accidentally sanded through it. To hold it all in place I used some masking tape which I wrapped tightly around the cylinder. It worked pretty well. The main full range drivers are 2 inch. I got these from AliExpress for around $4 each. I used these on my previous sandbar build and was quite happy with the sound for the price, so I decided to buy them again. Because these speakers have small terminals, soldering was the best option for me. Well, I tried to avoid soldering where possible and use crimps instead. These little alligator clips are very handy for holding the speakers to keep cables in place so they can easily be soldered. So 
So using a total of four 2 inch 8 ohm drivers, two for each left and right channel, I ran them in parallel configuration. So this means I'll end up with an impedance of 4 ohms. Still only using a very cheap Azito soldering iron. With the amount of soldering I've been doing lately, I think it's time I got a better one. I'm slowly getting better at soldering. Now that the PVA glue had had plenty of time to set, I could then remove the masking tape. So I think I turned out pretty well, except for up the top here. Got a little flap that hasn't quite stuck, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue under that and uh, give it some more time to dry again. So you can see at the top here, it's pretty well perfectly in line. Except down the bottom here, we've got like a little tiny bit of a gap. So I don't know whether I can put something over that and kind of just sand it back a little bit and blend it in. See what I've got to do about that, I'm not sure yet. It's super easy to trim off the XX veneer using a Stanley knife. As I said previously, it's just like cutting through thick paper pretty much. So I've cut that as best as I can with a Stanley knife. I'm not super happy with the finish. As you can see, it doesn't look super nice here. So what I might do is actually 3D print out a surround that I can glue on here and that'll tie that up. All right, so I've just quickly modeled up and 3D printed out this other piece. So this will sit over here and cover that whole join in the veneer there and also create a nice surround around the port. So I'm pretty happy with that finish. To protect the veneer, I'm applying a few coats of a quick drying matte finish spray on clear coat. It was super easy to apply, it only takes 20 minutes to dry between coats. To power the speaker drivers, I'm using a 2.1 channel amplifier board I got from AliExpress. So firstly I desoldered the JST connectors for the audio input along with the screw terminal power connector and removed them from the circuit board. I like using this board, I've used it on my previous project as well. It's quite cheap, it sounds good and it's simple. So I'm just marking out the location of the holes to drill through so I can mount the board to this base plate. I then sold the power connection and audio jack input cables directly to the amplifier board. Now that I had the board all mounted to the base plate, I could then come through and install all of the connectors into the prepared holes that I included in the base plate design. So I included a 3.5mm audio jack, two 5.5mm DC power jacks, and also a power switch. There's no clear markings on the amplifier board in which pin location I've got to solder in the left or right of the ground for the audio input. But I did find a schematic online that was a little bit hard to read but ended up working it out. So I did all the wiring using a mixture of soldering and terminal crimps. The main DC Input jack runs through a 10 amp inline fuse. This will provide protection if any short circuits or anything like that happen. The second DC jack will be used for a power output, which I can use to run other 12 volt devices. In this case, I'll be using it to run the Echo Dot, due to it also running on 12 volt. 
The reason being it means only one cable running from the wall socket to run both the speaker and the echo dot. So I found the sockets would come a bit loose because the bolt didn't really lock on very well. So I used some PVA glue, which helps to lock them in place. It also dries clear. As mentioned earlier, I'm using a TCP115 4 inch woofer from Dayton Audio. So based on the enclosure and tuning, I should get an F3 of about 52 hertz and a F6 of around 45 hertz. So the F3 is basically the frequency that's about 3 decibels lower than the flat response of the speaker. And F6 is 6 decibels lower. So now I could screw the woofer into the bottom of the cylinder and feed the cable back through the little slot I built into the design. So this will run down one of the legs and into the bottom of the um, enclosure down to the amplifier. Keeps all the cables nice and hidden. For the LED strip, originally I planned to have it flat around that groove, but I realized it couldn't bend it that direction, so I had to turn it sideways and fit it around against the little lip I've got there. As for fitting the two inch drivers, I used some self-adhesive foam strips around the outside to give them a nice seal. Some people use threaded inserts, they fit into place using a soldering iron. I find it easier to just 3D print the holes at the right size and then the screws just create their own threads in the plastic when they get driven in. Same goes for the top lid over the driver enclosure. I use foam tape all the way around the outside and through the middle. So there's two separate enclosures for the left and right channels. The slot I made big enough so that I could also run all of my wires down from the 2 inch drivers and the LED light strip on the base of the enclosure. So this runs through the leg and into where the amplifier will be housed along with all the fuses etc. As you can see here it feeds down through the support leg in a slot so it keeps them all nicely hidden. Again, I used some PVA glue to fit the lid of the base piece on which I printed out separately to avoid using support material. It has small holes around the pole perimeter to provide ventilation for any heat from the amplifier to escape upwards. Due to the LED light strip location is now visible from the outside, I 3D printed some small cover strips to hide it. So again, I used some PVA glue, wiped the excess off, and if there's any still there, it doesn't matter, it dries clear anyway, so you won't see it. As you can see here, the base plate below the amplifier also has many holes in it. This is to allow fresh air to be sucked up underneath while the hot air rises out the top. So it's using natural convection to cool the amplifier. This amplifier has a left, right and a bass channel. So I hooked all those speaker wires up to it. For the LED light strip, I've just connected that to that push button switch on the back there. I don't have a main push button switch to turn on the whole unit just for the LED lights because that can just be switched off at the wall but I'll probably leave it running all the time anyway because I want to be able to ask the Alexa to play music at any time. So it was a bit of a tight fit with all those wires but it did fit nicely in the end so that was a win. Now to screw on the top part of the enclosure, housing the 2 inch full wing drivers. As you can see I have a bit of black material on the top there, that's to try and dampen some of the high frequencies. There's probably something better I can use so I'll probably change that. So for the speaker cover I just printed a cylinder with some slats in the openings. Ideally it would be better to instead use some sort of thin acoustic material so it doesn't hinder the frequency of the drivers. But I figured it would be difficult to come up with something that looks nice so I'm happy with what I've come up with for now. 
To seal the top piece to the main cylinder, I went in from the bottom side and sealed it all up with some blue tack. Reason being so that I decided to pull it apart later, it will still come apart easily. For a more permanent solution, it would be better to use some sort of silicon sealant or adhesive. Now for the final piece of the build, to lift the bottom of the enclosure up and allow airflow up, I printed some small fleet and glued them on with PVA glue. So there you have it guys, another project completed. I'm extremely happy with how this thing turned out. It sounds really good, I think. Especially considering it only cost me about $130 or so. It has a decent amount of bass without being too much that it pisses off your neighbors. Also it has the 360 sound because you know, I got four speakers around the top. If you have it in the center of your room, you can spread sound all the way around every direction. It sounds the same. It's also very power efficient. So that little uh, power supply I have is a 12 volt, three amps. So 3 amps to 12 volts, about 36 watts, but only uses probably half that. So because it runs off 12 volt, you can basically take it with the anywhere like camping or something and plug it into your 12 volt battery because it uses a standard DC 5.5 millimeter jack and that's a very common jack. And it's very easy to make your own ones. You can also buy a Bluetooth version of that board as well. So instead of the Alexa, you could have it so you can set it up with your phone and Bluetooth. I didn't bother with Bluetooth, I prefer just using it with the Alexa because then I can just ask it any time it just turns on without having to fuss around getting my phone out trying to play something. So I ended up uh, replacing that material on the top and I got some memory foam and cut some bits of that up put it in the top there and I made it sound a lot better. But some key takeaways are next time I would probably print the base I'd use a different 3D printing software that you can vary the infill on different levels. So I would have printed the base part where the baffle with the driver the four inch driver connects to and I would have printed that with a probably a 60% infill to make it really solid and then left the top hollow again and put my no more gaps in the top. Also maybe this top piece here with these four drivers. I probably would have tried to incorporate some sphere shaped enclosures like I did on my other soundbar because it made it sound really good. If you enjoyed this journey don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button because I've got plenty more videos like this coming up. If you've got any other ideas for projects or any questions about this project or other projects I've done please comment below. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep creating.